This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com. Good afternoon, everyone. Rishus Rabbi Klein, um, the Rosh of the Agra de Perka ne- Network. I have this chus to be teaching for Agra de Perka for Kamat uh, 10 years already, in 12 years. And uh, it's a great uh, honor and privilege to be able to, uh, for this morning, relocate to Brooklyn. Um, give shkach to my good friend Rukhaim Fior for arranging today. And Rosh uh, Avi Mairi. Uh, we'd like to share with you this morning uh, for the occasion of Parsha Shlach. We, are, we know the Miraglim come into Eretz Yisrael. And the Rebbe Shalom said it's a very good land. And we know Eretz Yisrael is Artsenu HaKadosha. And the Miraglim seem to have had a great Yerida coming into Eretz Yisrael. Which is a phenomenon that we encounter really throughout history. Where for many people they go into Eretz Yisrael and they have a great aliyah. And a great elevation. And uh, they grow in Torah and Ruchnias. And sometimes it could happen, somebody goes to Eretz Yisrael and it seems that it has the opposite effect. So we'll try to explain a little bit this phenomenon. And to get an understanding about the unique Kedusha of Eretz Yisrael. Perhaps we could put it into contemporary terms. We know there's this little strip of land on the border of Eretz Yisrael that has seemed to be a thorn in the side of Kal Yisrael throughout history, known as Gaza. And uh, going back from the beginning of time to Avram Avinu, to Yitzchak Avinu, whether it's in, in this century, it's a piece of land that's always moving back and forth, back and forth. We conquer it, we make it beautiful, we build yeshivas there, we make greeneries there, then we disengage from the land. So how do we understand this, uh, the quality uh, on a spiritual level of this area of land that we know as Gaza? So I want to uh, begin by asking a number of questions on different areas of Eretz Yisrael and then presenting a tremendous Yisrael that's found in many Svarim. Let's begin with the davening that uh, of Friday night, of Leil Shabbos. <clears throat> we say in Marev, Friday night, which uh, we say all the time, Baruch Hashem Sukkah Shalom Aleinu, V'yal Kalamo Yisrael, V'yal Yerushalayim. We talk about Yerushalayim Friday night. Yerushalayim and Dachar Shmei. We're not in Yerushalayim, we're in Flatbush. We still say V'al Yerushalayim. We don't say V'al Yerushalayim any other night of the week. So why mention it, Dafka Lel Shabbos? Yerushalayim is beautiful, but what's the connection between Yerushalayim and the Marev of Lel Shabbos? Moreover, we know that for already... 450 years, Kimad all of Klal Yisrael's Makabo Shabbos with the Piyot, which was written by Rav Shlom al Kabetz. L'chadoidi. We all say L'chadoidi, that's the way we're Makabo Shabbos. And if you actually focus on the words, you'll notice that the majority of L'chadoidi is not about Shabbos at all. L'chadoidi is primarily about Yerushalayim. <laughs> Why are we speaking about Yerushalayim, Lel Shabbos? Shalim has nothing to do with Shabbos. Most of the stanzas, as soon as we get to the fourth stanza, Mikdash Melech Ir Melucha, Mikdash Melech, Sanctuary of the King, Ir Melucha, Kingly City. Which city does this refer to? This refers to Shalim, we're davening. Kumi Tzimi Toicha Hafecha. Why refer, why reference Yushalayim, Lel Shabbos? What does Yushalayim have anything to do with Kabbalah Shabbos? Hisnari may offer Kumi. Shake yourself off from the dust. Who are we talking to? We're talking to the city of Yerushalayim. Don't be embarrassed. Don't be ashamed. This refers to Yerushalayim. Why talk about Yerushalayim Lel Shabbos? What does Yerushalayim have to do with Shabbos Kodesh? That's one Ha'ara. Ha'ara number two. Avram Avinu has three buddies. Aner, Eshkel, and Mamre. If I were to ask you, which one was on the highest Madrega? We don't really know. We don't have too much information about Oner Ashkel Amamre. But we should be able to apply the usual principle that whoever's listed first is presumably the greatest. So you would think of Oner Ashkel Amamre, you would think it's Oner. In fact, the Gemara says in Baba Basar by the Benoit Slavchad, sometimes it says one daughter first, sometimes it says another. The Gemara asks it as a stira, and the Gemara answers, Malami Shishkulenheim. But that means if, it, if you don't have the other Pasuk, if you only have one Pasuk and it lists in a certain order, the Gemara usually takes that as evidence that the one listed first is the greatest. So one would expect, if 
Otherwise, if you look in Parshas Lech, Lecha Biladai Rak Asher Ochla Anam V'chel Kva Anashim Number Five Asher Holchu Iti Oner Eshkol Umamre with no other evidence, we probably could assume Oner was the greatest of the three. And yet, of all three, which one gave Avram Avinu the Eitzah to do Bris Mila? It was Mamre. Why Mamre? The Medrash says, Honor sells you. Are you out of your mind? You're going to do a Bris Mila. You're 100 years old. You can't. It's a dangerous procedure. Nowadays in a hospital, somebody's 100 years old, they're not touching them. So Honor, Honor says, what kind of uh, Eitzah is this? You can't do the Mila. Eshkol says, you can't do the Mila. What are your friends going to think about you? What are your, what are your associates going to think about you? Mamre is the only one who gives Avraham the Eitzah to do the Mila. So why is he listed last? Shouldn't he be listed first of all the friends of Avraham Avinu? I want to share with you a small passage of the Chesed Avram. <coughs> Chesed Avram was the great-grandfather of Reb Chaim Yosef David Azulai, the Chida, one of my favorite all time Gedalim. In fact, the Chida always refers to the Chesli Avram as his grandfather. So someone once asked the Chida, you can't take credit that the Chesli Avram is your grandfather, he was your great grandfather. So the Chida wrote a tshuva explaining how he's allowed to call the Chesli Avram his grandfather, even though he was his great grandfather. So the Chesed Avram writes a very interesting comment about the Kedusha of the city of Tzvas. If you look at number 8, this is the Chesed Avram, Rav Avram Azulai. This is his uh, most notable sefer. He says the Mispar Katan of the word Tzvas is 21. Im HaKoylel, 22. Tzvas is Keneged, the 22. Oisi Oisa, the Aleph Beis, says the Chesed Avram. <coughs> Ein ear that svas is muchenes umezumenes lahasig ba soid oimka shaltaira. Svas is predisposed. It has a strong leanings to be able to perceive the secrets of the Torah. In other words, if you want to plumb the depths of the Torah Akdoisha, you need to move to the city of Tzvas. That city is Mesugal to understand the secrets of the Torah. The Ein Avir Zach Bachol Eretz Yisrael Ka Avir Tzvas. That, I think, we all, we're all makir. There's no air in all of uh, the land of Israel as clear, as pristine as the city of Tzvas. And he brings a number of other uh, gematrias, and he says, if somebody passes away in the city of Tzvas, their soul goes straight to Gan Eden. Bottom line is, says the Chesed Avram, if you want to understand the secrets of the Torah, you should go to the city of Tzvas. It is the most mesugal city in all of Eretz Yisrael to be able to understand the Torah. Surprisingly, Chassam Soifer in the Tshuvas quotes this passage of the Chassel Yavram. And he dismisses it. He says, Chas v'shalom, that you could take these words literally. That Tzvas has any adifos to Yerushalayim? Can it be that a city has more Kedusha than Yerushalayim? Then it should come out that if you encounter the city of Tzvas, you should rise Kriya. And then when you hit Yerushalayim, you don't have to rise Kriya. And we say just the opposite. If you hit Tzvas, you don't tear. When you get to Yerushalayim, you tear. So says the Ichsam Soifer, it must be the Chesli Avram means that it's the holiest city except for Yerushalayim. But heaven forbid that Tzvas has more Kedusha than the city of Yerushalayim in any fashion, in any way whatsoever. So perhaps we can offer some kind of understanding in uh, the literal meaning of the words of the Chesed Avram. <coughs> Let's talk about another city in uh, Eretz Yisrael, or maybe not in Eretz Yisrael. And this is a city that appears many times in Sefer Yeshua, not to be confused with an exit going up to the Catskill Mountains, and that is the city of Goishen. If you look in number 10, Parak Yeshua. Perak Yud, Pasuk Mem Aleph, Vayakim Yehoshua Mikalish Bnei Aviyad Aza, Ve'ez Kol Eretz Goishen. Yehoshua conquered the city of Goishen. Now presumably if he's conquering the city of Goishen, then Goishen is Me'are Yisrael. Furthermore, Perak Yud Aleph, Vayikach Yehoshua, Kol Eretz Hazois, Hahor, Ve'ez Kol Hanegev, 
Ve'ez kol Eretz HaGoyshen, Yeshua conquers, again, the city of Goyshen. And then in Perak Tezvav, Ve'goyshen, Ve'choyloin, Ve'giloi, Orem, Achas, Esri, Ve'chatsrayen. So Goyshen is Me'ore Yehuda. <coughs> Says Radak, Eretz Goyshen, Ein Zeshel Mitzrayim. Don't, don't confuse this Goyshen with the Goyshen of Mitzrayim. There are two Goyshens. There's Goyshen where Klai Yisrael resided in Mitzrayim. And then there's the city of Goyshen, Me'ore Yehuda. But then the Radak brings the Medrash. And the Radak says, actually, this is the Goyshen of Eretz Mitzrayim. There was a land, a city of Goyshen and Mitzrayim. It was, so to speak, it jutted out of Egypt and it was Nivla into Eretz Yisrael. So it's part of Eretz Yisrael. However, it's absorbed into Mitzrayim. So it's uh, a little bit of this and a little bit of that. It's Me'ore Yehuda. But it's in absorbed and surrounded by the cities of Mitzrayim, so it could be considered the Mitzrayim, and it could also be considered Me'ore Yehuda. But that's a very interesting status. The city of Goyshen has an unusual status, namely, it's surrounded by Mitzrayim, but it's Me'ore Yisrael. Now I'm going to talk about one more city. We spoke about Yushalayim, we spoke about Hebron, we spoke about Tzvas, we spoke about Goyshen. Let's speak about Aza for a few minutes. I just want to read to you simple Rishonim. We're going to start with the Rashbam. This Rashbam, I believe, is one of the most frightening comments that any of the Rishonim ever made. The Rashbam is found in Parshas Vayira. You don't have it on the sheet. Achar hadvarim ha'ela va'alekim nisas Abraham. After these words, and in Bansham, we translated, Hashem tested Avraham. We learned the Akedah was a test, the final and ultimate Nisayan of Avraham Avinu. Asara Nisayana Nisa Avraham Avinu. Rashi's father by Akasha, what's Achar Hadvarim Ha'ila? It implies that after something that just happened, now and only now, the Bansham tested Avraham. So Rashi says that the Akedah comes in the aftermath of a conversation of Yishmael and Yitzchak. Yishmael says to Yitzchak, Yitzchak, you think you're a big shot, that the Yvon Shem told you to do Mila, and you did Mila at eight days old. I did Mila at 13 years old. I'm a greater Moisar Nefesh than you are. Whereupon Yish, uh, Yitzchak says to Yishmael, if the Yvon Shalalem would have told me to sacrifice my whole body to kill myself, I would do it. So I'm a bigger Moiser Nefesh than you are. So after this conversation, Achar Hadvar Ma'ila, so Takavale Kim Nisos Abraham. So I always think, you know, the Achroinim ask, why is the Akedah test for Abraham? Not test for Abraham. Abraham does the Maisa, and then he goes home and he eats lunch. It's a test for Yitzchak. Say Achar Hadvar Ma'ila, Kim Nisos Yitzchak. No, it's not a test for Yitzchak. How's it a test for Yitzchak? Yitzchak just took a nedar. He said, if, if the Almighty would tell me to sacrifice myself, I would do it. So he said he would do it. It's not a, it's not a nisayon. When you make it, it's a nedar. He's chayif to do it. He took it upon himself. But Avraham Binu never took it upon himself. So it's a lekim nisas Avraham. That's how Rashi learns. The problem the other Rishonim have with Rashi is that the lekim nisas Avraham is not in the immediate aftermath of the conversation of Yitzchak and Yishmael. Yitzchak and Yishmael's mila was a uh, parak before. In the interim, interposing between the conversation of Yitzchak and Yishmael is the episode of Avraham Avinu getting together with Avimelech, Melech Plishtim. So it's not really Achar Hadvarim Ha'ilah. So the Rashbam disagrees with his uh, grandfather. By the way, the Rashbam writes in the beginning of Parshas Vayeshev, he had a conversation with his grandfather. He says, Rashi, Zayda, do me a favor. I would like you to write a perush on Chumash al pi oimek hapshat. So you say, what else is Rashi doing? That Rashi writes, you know, the, the catchphrase of Rashi. What's Rashi's objective? Rashi writes, Parakim HaPasik Ches, Va'ani Laibasi Ela L'Pshut HaShemikra. Rashi's not a darshan. Rashi's giving Pshut HaShemikra. So what did the Rashbam want Rashi to write? The answer is, Rashbam wanted Rashi to write, Oimek HaPshat. Oimek HaPshat is different than Pshat. It's even more literal. It's even more elementary. By the way, the Ben La Ashri understands that what the Rashbam wanted Rashi to write 
was to write a parish on Chumash based on current events. That's how the Ben Lashri interprets what the Rashbam's challenge to Rashi is. It doesn't seem to be that that's what the Rashbam wanted Rashi, but that's one way of looking at it. So Rashbam therefore disagrees with Rashi. The Rashbam learns that Nisa does not mean a test. Nisa means to chepa, to afflict, to hurt, to pain, to aggrieve, that the Yibbani Shalom tortured Avraham Avinu. V'alaykim nisas Avraham. Achar hadvarim ha'ilan. I'm going to read to you the words of the Rashbam. Says the Rashbam, Hashem says, Avraham, I just told you, Eretz Yisrael belongs to you. If it belongs to you, you have no right to curry favor with the king of the Philistines. You have no right to give him sheep. You have no right to make peace treaties. Here is the way I want you to deal with others in Eretz Yisrael. Loi sechaya kol neshama. You have no right to give it away. Achar hadvar You make a peace treaty with Avimelech that you could be peaceful with him and his children and his grandchildren. Go take your son and slaughter him. Achar hadvar ma'ila velakim nisa es Avraham. You have no right not to give away. You have no right to be peaceful with anyone else in Eretz Yisrael. And therefore says Rashbam, Mishkan Shiloi, Mishkan Gilgal, first base Hamikdash, second base Hamikdash, and all Jewish tragedy came about as a result that Avram Avinu made a treaty with the Philistines. This is the Rashbam. Why? Shaharei Eretz Plishtim Bechlal Gvol Yisrael. Gaza is part of Israel. That's the Rashbam. What does Rashi say about that? There are two Rashis, just simple Rashis. We've all seen these Rashis. Rashi seems to contradict himself. Parshas Toldois, Vahira Ba'aretz, Mulvada Ravarishan Shabim Avram. Now there's a famine time of Yitzchak. Vayelach Yitzchak, Elavi Melech, Melech Plishtim, Gerara Yitzchak goes to Gaza. Vayera Lavashem Ayimar, Al Tered Mitzrayma Shchain Ba'aretz. So the simple reading of the Pasuk is Yitzchak goes to Gaza. God says, don't go to Mitzrayim. Stay in Eretz Yisrael. Says Rashi, this is Araya, Pasha Rashi in Chumash. Al Tered Mitzrayim, Shahidaite Loredis Mitzrayim. Amrlai Al Tered Mitzrayim, Shata Oilo Tmima, Ein Chutzula Eretz Kedailach. So Rashi is saying, uh, Beferish, God is part of Eretz Yisrael. A few psukim later, Vayizra Yitzchak Ba'aretz Hahi. Remember this Pasuk? Yitzchak planted in that land. Vayimtsa Bashana Hahi. Mea Sha'arim. Yitzhak was very successful. Ayyvarchev Hashem. Says Rashi. Ba'aretz Hahi in that land. Af al pi she'eno chashuva ke'aretz Yisrael atzma. Even though Gaza is not considered like Eretz Yisrael itself. Ke'aretz shiva goyim. So what's going on? Rashi, if you took him earlier, said that Yitzhak was in Gaza. And, and Hashem said, don't leave. Ein chutz la'aretz k'day l'cha. And then a few psukim later, Rashi says, Yitzchak was successful in that land, even though it's not k'aretz Yisrael atzma, k'aretz shiva goyim. Comes of Yom Mizrahi, and Mizrahi says, there's no steer at all. <coughs> Gaza's Eretz Yisrael. But it's not Eretz Yisrael atzma. What does that mean? There are two levels of Kedusha Sa'aretz. There's the, the Eretz Yisrael that we conquered from the Shiva Goyim. And that's Iker Eretz Yisrael. And then there's Eretz Yisrael that the Oile Mitzrayim conquered from other nations. Now, Gaza is not one of the Shiva uh, Goyim. Gaza was from Cham, from Mitzrayim. So that's what Rashi means. It's not Chashuva Ke Eretz Yisrael. Atzma. It's not like the Eretz Shiva Goyim. By the way, Halacha Lamaisa. Is Gaza part of Eretz Yisrael? The Rambam seems to say no. And it seems to be Mavuar in the first mission on Gitin. You know the borders of Eretz Yisrael. That means Ashkelon is already Chutz Oretz. Gaza is more south than, uh, than Ashkelon. And therefore, the Maharik Paskins in a tshuva, based on the Rambam and other sources, that Gaza is not part of Eretz Yisrael. What? 
the Marik says, the Chor did not conquer it. But Rabbi Yaakov Emden has a tshuva in the Marik Tzia, and he says, uh, the Ramam is only talking about Hilchas Gitin. What do Hilchas Gitin have to do with Kedusha Sar? So Hilchas Gitin are tali on whether Biki and Lishma or Eden Mitzuri and Lakaimai. The Rambam's not discussing Kedusha Sa'aretz. Avada and Avada, Gaza was conquered by Oile Mitzrayim. And then Rabbi Yaakov Emden says another Chidush that even though it wasn't conquered by Oile Bavel, but the base Chashmoinoi in the times of Chanukah conquered Gaza, and that's Bechlal Kibosheni. And therefore, it's Avad and Avada, uh, at least Midra Banon, like Eretz Yisrael, and possibly even Midai Raisa, and Lechara, that's how we paskin. That seems to be how we paskin. The Radvaz also writes in the Tshuva that at least Midra Banon. So, you see that, aside from the fact that historically it's moving back and forth, and I'm not here to talk politics, I'm here to speak halachically. It has a very... Um, it, it, its halachic status vacillates and it's unclear and there's a certain degree of uncertainty and this will be the basis for today's shir that the unique status of Kedushas Haaretz is intertwined with the halacha and the Torah that is connected to a specific area in Eretz Yisrael. So with these questions, I want to ask you another five questions. That's how we're going to answer um, <coughs> the first part of the shir. I want to bring to your attention an episode in Sefer Yehoshua and a Gemara in Tzmura. So Yehoshua conquered many areas in Eretz Yisrael. He conquered how many Malachim? 31 Malachim. But Yehoshua had a particularly difficult time conquering one area. Vayal Misham, number 17, El Yehoshvei Devir. He went up from there to the residence of Devir. Devir. By the way, says the Navi, V'shem Devir Lefanim. You know what Devir used to be called? Kiryas Sefer. Anyone ever be ever? Anyone here ever in Kiryas Sefer? You were, but you'll never be there again. Because uh, there's a, they, they passed a law in Israel that you're not allowed to call it Kiryas Sefer anymore. Why? Because it's too far away from the biblical city. So there's a law in Israel that if you're too far away from the ancient biblical city, you can't call it that. So they changed Kiryas Sefer. now. Modiyin Ilit. Okay, fine. But the name of Devir used to be Kiryat Sefer. Question number one, who cares what it used to be called? By the way, you know what Brooklyn used to be called? Kings. Kings. A colony, a British colony, right? We don't really care what it used to be called. Why does the Navi have to tell me what the name of the city used to be called? V'shem Devir. Next, Pasuk. Vayomer Kolev. Kolev said, Asher Yake as Kiryat Sefer. Whoever conquered Kiryat Sefer. Kolev. That's what it used to be called. That's not the name. So it's bad enough where we have to give the name of what it used to be called. But now Kolev is going back in time and he's calling it, he's referring to it by the name that it used to be. It should say, Kolev said, whoever conquers Devir, not whoever conquers Kiryat Sefer. V'nosati loy es achsa biti leisha. I will give over my daughter Achsa as a wife to the conqueror of Kiryat Sefer. Why is Kalev so sure that the conqueror of Kiryat Sefer would be an eligible bachar for his daughter? I mean, is that what he's looking for in a shidduch? A guy who could conquer an entire city? Does that mean he's uh, the right match for his daughter? Why is he offering his daughter to anyone who conquers the city. If he would say, whoever memorizes Kala Torah Kula, I'll give it as to my daughter, maybe if I state I could understand that. Why whoever conquers the city of Kiryat Sefer, I'll give them to my daughter. So the Pasuk says, Vayokudas Niel ben Kenazachi Kalev. Kalev's brother, you know, Kalev really lucked out. Who knows who could have conquered the city? His brother conquered the city. Vayitin lois achsa bitai leisha. That's the story. Question number one. Yeshua went into every single city in Eretz Yisrael and he wiped it out like nobody's business. There were very few casualties in the entire 14 years of Kivish V'chilak. Why did he have a hard time conquering Kiryat Sefer? Why? Why was it so hard? It wasn't a walled city. What was difficult in conquering Kiryat Sefer? Number two, why is this the only city in Eretz Yisrael that the Navi says what the name used to be? Number three, why does Kalev call it by the name it used to be. Comes the Gemara and Tamura, and the Gemara and Tamura says a completely different story. 
The Gemara says, no, no, what it says in the Navi, ignore that. Let me tell you what really happened. Yeshua ben Nun was, was hanging around Moshe Rabbeinu. And Moshe Rabbeinu says to Yeshua, it's my last day. For today's shir, I'm not giving you any information. You ask me all the shilas that you have. So Yeshua says, I don't have any shilas. I've been, uh, uh, I've been with you 24 hours a day. I have nothing to ask. So Chazal say that Moshe was upset with that. Yeshua shouldn't have said that, that I don't have any questions to ask. And because of that, when Moshe Rabbeinu passed on, 300 halachos were forgotten during the Avilas of Moshe Rabbeinu. So Kalev, it was a problem. We lost 300 halachos. So Kalev said, you know what Kiryat Sefer means? Whoever reminds us of the 300 halachos that were forgotten during the morning of Moshe Rabbeinu, I will give him, I will give him Achsa, my daughter, as a wife. That's what the Gemara says. That's what Kiryat Sefer means, the halachos. So asks the Sefer Arve Nachal. Arve Nachal was written by Rab David Ivshitz. Rab David Ivshitz is the author of Levushe Srad. If you open up any Shulchan Aruch, the commentary on the Magen Avram is Levushe Srad of Rab David Ivshitz. The Arve Nachal asks Rab Pinchas Karitzer. Asks the Devar Yecheskel. They all ask. The Gemara is Soiser the Pshutoy Shalmikra. Pshutoy Shalmikra says that Kalev said, whoever conquers the city, I will give them Achsa, my daughter. And the Gemara says, no, scratch that. That's not what it means. It's a completely different story. What happened was, whoever reminds us of the 300 halachas that were forgotten during the Avelis of Moshe Rabbeinu. <coughs> One more question. If you look at number 20, Yeshua sends them out and he goes to ambush. Yehoshua dwelled and lodged among the, among the people. Vayolen, he lodged among the people. Says the Gemara Megillah, what does it mean? Vayolen, lon ba'oimka shel halacha. Yeshua spent the night before the war delving into the depth of halacha. Lon b'toichoimka shel halacha. Now if you had a general... Would you want your general the night before the war learning a sugya of shas? You would expect the general the night before the war, he needs a good night's sleep, he needs to be strategize, strategizing, he needs to be scheming, he needs to be plotting. What is Yeshua learning the night before his war against the city of Ai? Says the Arve Nachal, says the Pinchas Karatzer, says the Devei Yechezkel, Says Rabbi Levi Yitzchak of Arditchev, this week's parsha. Eretz Yisrael is different than any other land in the world. United States of America, when the Rebbe Hashem deems it the right time for uh, Americans to conquer the land from the British, the time has come, and now the land belongs to the Americans. The land of Eretz Yisrael is inextricably bound with the Torah Hakdasha. Every city in Eretz Yisrael is connected to a different chilek of Torah. And the only way to conquer that city in Eretz Yisrael is you have to master the area and the mitzvah of Torah that corresponds to that region or that area. You master that chilek of Torah and then automatically that area of Eretz Yisrael will fall to you by default. Because there is a concept that is introduced by a comment on the Sefer HaYetzirah and it's brought in all the Svarim, that there's an idea called Ashan, Ayin Shin Nun. Oilam Shana Nefesh. There is place, there is time, and there is person. There's a realm of place, there's a realm of time, and there's a corresponding individual. Let's give one example. There's a place, let's call that place Kodesh HaKadoshim. What time corresponds to the Kodesh HaKadoshim? Yom HaKippurim. What person corresponds to Kodesh HaKadosh and Yom HaKippurim? Kohen Gadol. Therefore, the Kohen Gadol goes into the Kodesh HaKadosh and Yom HaKippurim. Eretz Yisrael is con- a concentration of this concept. Each part of Eretz Yisrael corresponds to a different chilek of Torah. There are certain areas of Eretz Yisrael, by living there, by breathing the air, you will have an automatic connection to that particular chilek of Torah. 
And conversely, if, in, if you are distant from a certain chilek of Torah, it will be impossible or very difficult to have access and maintain control over that particular area of Eretz Yisrael. Now, says the Avi Nachal, <clears throat> there was a city, the name of the city was Devir. But Lefanim, Lefanim doesn't mean in the past. Lefanim means in the Pneumius, in the internal circuitry, the internal mechanism of the city of Devir was Kerya Sefer. Meaning, you know what part of the Torah corresponded to the city of Devir? The 300 halachas that were forgotten during the morning of Moshe Rabbeinu corresponded to the city of Devir. The reason they had, had such a hard time conquering the city of Devir is because the chilek of Torah that corresponded to Devir were the 300 halachas that were forgotten during the morning of Moshe Rabbeinu. The rest of Eretz Yisrael was easy to conquer because they reviewed and understood and maintained knowledge and havana of all of the Torah. But there was one chilek of Torah that they lost access to. Those were the 300 halachas forgotten during the morning of Moshe Rabbeinu. So they couldn't conquer the city of Devir. So Kalev said, whoever conquers the city of Devir, that's Pshuta Yishel Mikra. But the Gemara is not disagreeing with that and the Gemara is not even changing that. The Gemara is giving you the deeper meaning. How would somebody go ahead and conquer the city of Devir? It means anyone who is able to restore and recover the 300 halachas that were forgotten during the Abel of Moshe, he will be able to conquer the city of Devir. And sure enough, Asniel ben Kanaz restored those 300 halachas and he was able to conquer the city of Devir. That's what Kalev meant. That's why Kalev was willing to give over to the conqueror, his daughter, not because he assumed this would be some kind of macho soldier, but he realized it would have to be a Tamil Chacham of great eminence. So this Yisoyed really gives us fertile ground because we don't know which chilek of Torah corresponds to different areas of Neretz Yisrael. All we know is one thing, that there was a city, the name of the city was Devir, there were 300 halachos, and those 300 halachos corresponded to that little city. Which Miktsaya of Torah corresponds to other cities in Eretz Yisrael? We don't know. But it's very fertile ground to make an attempt and to try to understand which chilek of Torah corresponds to which area in Eretz Yisrael. And in fact, I heard uh, from the outside, um, Rav Moshe Wolfson was quoted, Rav Wolfson wrote an entire sefer on this subject, where he theorizes, going through all the cities of Eretz Yisrael, and which chilek of Torah corresponds to that particular city. I would like to share with you some of them, and perhaps add one or two. Let us talk about <coughs> the city of Hebron. City of Hebron. Avram Avinu, throughout his uh, sojourning in Eretz Yisrael, was in many locations. Bein, Re- Bein Ha'ai, or Bein Avram Avinu, is Aluza Banegev, he's going all over the place in Eretz Yisrael. He finally makes one stop. And this stop, he stops in Hebron. If you take a look, in number 42. Vayehal Avram, Vayavoy, Vayeshev, Beiloy Ne Mamre, Asher Bechevroin, Vayiven Sham Mizbeach Lashem. Am Ravinu finally comes to Chevroin. What does Riban Shalom tell Avram Avinu in Chevroin? Am Ravinu tells, um, Riban Shalom tells Avram the following message. Vihifrei Sio Ischabe Maoid Maoid, Unisati Chalagoyim, Umelachim Mimacha Yetzeyo. Avraham, kings will come from you. That was a comment, that was a prophecy that Yvonne Shalom told Avram Avinu in the context of the mitzvah of bris milah. In the context of the mitzvah of bris milah, Hashem told Avraham, kings will come from you. Now from here we learn an amazing yesoid in Torah Nevim and Ksuvim that you could learn the whole Tanakh a hundred times, you might not pick this up, but this is an amazing principle. And here the principle goes. Whenever the Rebbein Hashem tells a Navi prophecy, it will always come true in the city where the Rebbein Hashem told the Navi that Navi. It might not come true that day, it might not come true in a year. 
Umelachim imachayetzeo. Which Melachim is Rebbe Hashem referring to? David HaMelach. 837 years later. Rebbe Hashem tells Shmuel, we're going to have a new Melach Yisrael. David HaMelach is going to be coronated. And the Pesukim say, David HaMelach says, where should I go? Where should I go? David HaMelach was in Yushalayim. Rebbe Hashem says, where should you go to be coronated? Go to Hebron! Why is David HaMelach leaving Yushalayim to go to Hebron to be coronated? Furthermore, after the Bnei Yehuda coronate David HaMelech, the rest of Kla Yisrael wants to coronate David HaMelech. And David says, Rebbe Hashem, where should I go to be coronated by Kol Yisrael? And Rebbe Hashem says, go to Hebron. Why does he have to go to Hebron? What's wrong with Yushalayim? Yushalayim is the capital. Why is David going to Hebron? The answer is because there's a principle of Nevoah. That if Rebbe Hashem communicates with a Navi in a certain city, and the stones are there, and the walls are there, and the trees are there, and they're hearing the Rebbe Shalom say these words to the Navi, the Rebbe Shalom wants those stones and those trees and those walls to see, even a thousand years later, the, th- the fruition of that Nevoah. And that's a principle throughout the Nevi'im and Ksuvim, and this is the principle discovered by the Sefer, Nefla'is Mitayr Hashem. He says you could take it to the bank throughout Tayr and Nevi'im and Ksuvim. Okay? So, Hebron is the city of Melachim, kings. Why is Rebbein Shalom telling Avram Avinu that kings are going to come from him in the context of the mitzvah of bris milah? The Zayar says, two people in Chumash, in Tarnavim Magsuvim, were given melucha, were given royalty. Yosef HaTzadik and Bayaz. When was, when was Yosef given Malucha? Yosef was given Malucha when he was tempted by Eshes Poitifera. And it was a very difficult temptation. And Chazal described very graphically and very vividly what Yosef had to overcome. But when Yosef overcame that temptation, Hashem bestowed Malchus on Yosef at Tzadik, the Zayar says, because he was Shoimer Bris Mila. Boyaz. Rus was lying there. Belayla, Chazal say, Vayilah face, Bayaz had to overcome the temptation. Hashem said, you were Shoimer Mila, Melachim will come from you. So the mitzvah of Mila, one is Zoyche Temalchos. So therefore, in Hebron, where the Yibam Shem gives Avram the mitzvah of Mila, Hashem makes sure to say, by the way, Umelachim Imechai Yitzayu, kings are going to come from you. Hebron is the city of kings. When Abishalom wanted to usurp the Malucha, he made sure to go to Hebron. You can't have a real king if you're not in Hebron. Hebron is the city of Malchus. By the way, when Avram Avinu bought the Ma'aras HaMachpelah, it says, Vayakam Sidei Ephron. What does Rashi say? Tekuma HaYisalai. It had an elevation because it was elevated from the hand of a Hedyite and it entered the hand of a... Melech. Rashi doesn't say the hand of a tzaddik, the hand of a Baal Chesed. Why is Avram Avinu all of a sudden being called a Melech? Because in Hebron, that's the city of Malchus. Avram Avinu comes to Hebron. What do the people tell him? Nesi Eloikim Ata B'Sachin. You're a Melech. Hebron is the city of Malchus. Hebron is the city of Rismila. What chilek of Torah corresponds to Hebron? The mitzvah of Rismila. If you live in Hebron, you have an appreciation for the Mitzvah of Brismila. Oner was not a resident of Hebron. Eshkoa was not a resident of Hebron. Mamre was a resident of Hebron. So Mamre appreciated Brismila. So Mamre could give the Eitzah to Avraham Avinu about the Mila. He wasn't greater than Oner. He wasn't greater than Eshkoa. He had a deeper appreciation for this Mitzvah because of the location in Eretz Yisrael that he lived. Can we suggest then that the Chesed of Ram is meant very literally? There is no city in Eretz Yisrael that is more predisposed to understanding the secrets of the Torah than the city of Tzvas. And the Chesam Soifer asks, that's uh, heretical. How could you say that any city in Eretz Yisrael has more Kedusha than the city of Yushalayim? The answer is the Chesed of Ram is not saying Tzvas has more Kedusha than Yushalayim. The same way that Mamre was able to be Miyayitz Avram Avinu about Brismila, 
Not because he was greater than Aner, not because he was greater than Eshkol, because of where he lived, because the city of Hebron corresponds to the mitzvah of Milah, and if you live in Hebron, you have a deeper appreciation for the mitzvah of Milah. Chesed Avram is being Megale, that the city of Tzvas is more conducive to understand and plumb and appreciate the depths of Kabbalah than any other city, and therefore those who live there have a certain advantage over anywhere else. That's like saying... You know, what's the more important part of the body? The heart or the eyes? The heart. The heart is more important. Oh, so if the heart is more important, then if the eyes could see, then the heart, Kavachaymer, could see. No. <laughs> Just because the heart is more important, it doesn't mean it necessarily has every particular quality of every other organ. There might be certain specific qualities that another organ has that the heart does not have. It's the same thing with Eretz Yisrael. Yerushalayim is the heart, is the lev ha'aretz, is kihi beis chayenu. It doesn't necessarily mean that every advantage of other cities and mekoymas in, in Eretz Yisrael are shared by Yerushalayim. Let's talk about one or two more cities. Let's talk about the city of Beis Lachem. <clears throat> Who's buried in Beis Lachem? Rachel Imenu. What is the Koyach of Rachel Imenu? The Rabban Shem tells Rachel Imenu, Yesh tikva la'acharisech nom Hashem v'shavu vanim l'gvula. The Koyach of Rachel Imenu is she heralds Klal Yisrael and gathers them back to Eretz Yisrael. That's the Koyach of Rachel. Somehow, the power of the city of Beis Lechem and Rachel Imenu is that it brings Klal Yisrael back to Eretz Yisrael. Which mitzvah in the Torah is the mitzvah that summons Klal Yisrael back to Eretz Yisrael, back to their ancestral land? That's the mitzvah of Yoivel. V'shavu ish el achuzasai. B'shnas ha-yoivel hazois, tashuvu ish el achuzasai. By the way, who was born in Beis Lachem? Al Yad ben Yishai Beis Halachmi. David HaMelech was born in Beis Lachem. Mashiach is born in Beis Lachem. What is the, you know, if somebody claimed to be Mashiach, how do you know? Yeah, no, what's the, what is the characteristic one has to have if they are Mashiach? They have a card, they have a, they have a business card, I am Mashiach. So the Rambam says, very simple, if the person builds the base of Mikdash and is Mechabet's Nidche Yisrael, if he brings Klai so back to Eretz Yisrael, that, that's the ingredient, that's what it takes. Which mitzvah, which chelikim Torah corresponds to Beis Lechem? It's the mitzvah of Yoivel. The mitzvah of Yoivel. In fact, Yoivel, says Rabbi Wolfson, is Rashi Tevois, Beis Lechem Yehuda. Yoivel is Rashi Tevois, Beis Lechem Yehuda. And therefore, Rachel Imenu, who announces Veshavu Banim Legvulam, she has to be buried in Beis Lechem Yehuda. And Mashiach, who the Rambam says will be Mechabet's Nidche Yisrael, is born in Beis Lechem Yehuda. And even the Umois HaOlam, when they want to mimic their Mashiach, they have to make the claim that he's born in Beis Lechem Yehuda. And Yoivel is which year? The 50th year. So what day of the calendar corresponds to Yoivel? The 50th day of Sphira. The 50th day of Sphira. What carbon do you bring on the 50th day of Sphira? Shte Lechem. Bez Lechem. Bez Lechem. The 50th day of, of uh, Yoivel is Shavuos, the birthday of the Maccabees. Nidche Amo Yisrael. And who brought this all about? Nami. Nami is Rashi Tevois. Mekabetz Nidche Amo Yisrael. That's the city of Beis Lechem. That is the mitzvah that corresponds to the city of Beis Lechem. How about Yerushalayim? What mitzvah corresponds to Yerushalayim? Yerushalayim is Shabbos. The mitzvah of Yerushalayim is the mitzvah of Shabbos. You can't have Yerushalayim without Shmir Shabbos. 
So Friday night when we talk about Shabbos, it's always interspersed with references to Yushalayim. Hapa, the, on, on Tuesday night, you're not talking about Yushalayim. But Friday night, it's Hapoi Reis, Sukkah Shom Aleinu, V'Akalam Yisrael, V'Yal Yerushalayim. The whole Lecha Doidi is all about not Shabbos, Yushalayim, because what Yushalayim is in Makoim, Shabbos is in Zman. Let's talk about Goshen for a moment. What's the city of Goshen? So how many letters are in the Asar Sadibrois? 620 letters. Kesar. 613 letters for the first 613 letters of the Asar Sadibrois. The Balaturim says, Asher Lereyacha is seven letters corresponding to the seven mitzvahs to Rabbanon. In fact, the Chesam Soifer says, Asher Lereyacha is a Rashi Tevois for the Zion mitzvahs to Rabbanon. Aleph is Avelos. Um, Chesam Soifer says, the Shin is Simcha of Shever Brachos. The Resh is Rechitza, Netil Siadayim. Lamid is Pas Akom, Lechem. Resh is Rashuyais, Eruve Chatzeres, Shutufe Muvais. Ayin is Amalek, Mikra Megillah. And Chaf Ar is Kaihanim, the Nes of Chanukah. Ashel Reyach, that's a Chsam Sefer. So if Eretz Yisrael corresponds to the Torah, and every city in Eretz Yisrael corresponds to a different Mitzayah of Torah, then what corresponds to the mitzvahs drabanan? Are drabanan part of the Torah? They are. Once the Chachamim say you have to keep them, then there's a mitzvah dairais of loisasur. So there are mitzvahs that are quasi. They're not mamish on the level of dairaisa, but we have to observe them. And in a certain sense, they're even uh, more important. Says Rabbi Wolfson, the mitzvahs drabanan are the city of Goishan. By the way, what's the final mitzvah of the mitzvahs drabanan? Chanukah. And of course, all the Ramazim to Chanukah are always in the context of the city of Goishen. Goishna, the Bnei Yisachar says, you know, the letters of the dreidel. And by the way, Yaakov Avinu was buried directly from the city of Goishen on Chanukah. So the mitzvahs to Rabbanon correspond to Goishen. Goishen is Goishen part of Eretz Yisrael? Is it not part of Eretz Yisrael? It is. It's surrounded by Mitzrayim. It's surrounded by Chutzoret, but it's part of the body of Eretz Yisrael. And what about Gaza? Why are we having such a hard time with the city of Gaza? Could it be because this, the idea of its definitive halachic status is very much roughly biyadenu? We're, we have a great degree of uncertainty regarding exactly what its halachic status is. The Rambam seems to imply maybe it's not part of Eretz Yisrael. The borders of Eretz Yisrael for Gittin seem to indicate Ashkelon is the southern border. The Marik says it's not. Rabbi Yaakov Emden says it is. So what are we waiting for? Maybe Gaza will have to say, Teiko will have to say, you know, Elio Anavi, Hobi Mevarer the Halacha, and then Nebez Hashem will be able to uh, have full access. But this is a, a deeper appreciation of Kedusha Sa'aretz, as Rebbe Levi Yitzhak of Bardichev. Shlach lecha anoshim v'yasuru, not v'yachperu, v'yasuru. V'yasuru is a lashon of Torah. You go into Eretz Yisrael and you learn the Torah that corresponds to that ear, to that location, and by doing so you'll be able to maintain full access and sovereignty. May HaKadosh Baruch Hu grant us Yediyas HaToyra B'chom Mekzai Seha and we should be Zoycha V'shavu Banim L'Gvulam to be able to, to return to Eretz Yisrael in all of its glory. Thank you very much. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com